in the industry that we're in, you know, yeah. a lot of our competitors, uh, like even pictures they put up on Facebook, you can see from, you know, this far away, how much fibrillation is in, you know, and how thick the print is or, or whatever. And a lot of it comes down to, it's just because they're just business guys, they're not printers. Squeegeeing Inc. Podcast Season 2. This podcast is sponsored by Blind Maggot, Magna Colors, Screen Print World, Target Transfers, and Adobe Creative Suite. I'm Alex. I own Supreme Screen. Um, we screen print for um, mainly trade clients. Um, we do a lot of music merch for merch agencies. Um, we do uh, we do quite a few tote bags every month for um, sort of more corporate type middlemen um, and other printers. So printers who want to outsource stuff because either they don't have time to do it or um, maybe something's a bit difficult or whatever, um, or they want something specific, then they'll send it our way. Yeah. I feel like you've really made a name for yourself with the like hyper detailed, um, you know, all the sim process stuff because mm-hmm. you've really put that extra effort in to compare plus on and water-based and refine it. So like, I know last time I looked at your profile, well, not last time I looked at your profile, but there was this post that I was following and it was about you comparing Plaso and water-based. And you're saying like, look, I'm just being honest. These are the, these are the pros and cons of each, but if I can get my water-based to be as vibrant as my Plaso, then that will be the answer. Like, where are you on that kind of journey? Um, yeah, sort of, uh, I think, um, Basically, I've gotten to a place where I know what my go-to is for certain types of work. So whether it's certain types of garments or certain types of artwork, um, I kind of, uh, I suppose in the last couple of years, worked really hard on trying to dial in as much as possible um, and just go, right, okay, you know, look at a piece of art and go, right, we're going to print that with um, a discharge base and plastisol top because, um, I don't know, maybe we don't have enough heads on the, um, on the press for enough flashes or cool down stations to do it all water based or um or whatever really. So mm. yeah, so we 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 definitely haven't settled on right, we're only printing water based no. um or only printing plastic. So majority of what we do is water based, uh, definitely. And it's it'll always be kind of our first choice if possible. Um obviously everything is possible, but um it all depends on how much time you want to spend on yeah, a job. Yeah, is it really. worth it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. And so for us, um, just it's, it's always that battle. Um, as a you know, if you want to be a good printer, if it's something you're passionate about, then you you always have that battle of uh, I want to get it right. I want to get it right. So you spend way too long on a job, and you know you end up making no money on it because you 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 spend so long getting it right. Um, so I'm working really hard on trying to find the balance between having a really good print, um, but also trying to make a penny or two off it, you know? Yeah. Cause am I right to think that your margins, I mean, you have to be more competitive if you're working with the trade people, especially on those canvas bag things. Cause I've, I've run websites where, um, canvas bags are on offer and I know that they just, they're just going for the cheapest person. I think, um, because they're not even seeing the product before it gets to the customer. And then they're feeling it might be like the customer doesn't really know anyway, they might not pick up on it. So like, mm-hmm. how are you, how are you balancing, like being competitive? Do you know <clears throat> other people's prices? Do they say like you're, you're coming in too high or do they go yes. too to quality? Sometimes, sometimes, um, yeah, you get, you get occasional clients who are like, look, we're, you know, we're getting it printed for this price in, in this place. And if it's ridiculous, I'll just say, okay, we'll carry on, carry on going to where you're going then, you know? Yeah. Um, but I'm also aware that if we're printing mostly for trade customers, then there's got to be some compromise there. Um, because otherwise you won't get the work, you know, mm. so you, you might as well just print for the consumer then, you know, yeah. don't be in B, don't be in B2B if you're not willing to, look at those tighter margins basically but the kind of the the answer for me in that is is right well where can we where can we save time without cutting corners you know mm. and to me the answer was putting a mezzanine floor in 
putting, you know, filling it with um, director screen and auto reclaim, um, auto coater, um, you know, automating as much as possible so that we can reduce the amount of time that we spend on each job. So I'm not willing to compromise on quality ever. Um, that's that's 100% a, yeah. a, a, no, a no-go, but I'm willing to um, put the money into processes you know, mm-hmm. into making our processes faster so that we can achieve the same result um, with a lot, yeah, with a lot less time, basically. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, if you're doing B2B, then I think you're a bit silly to think that you, you know, that you can charge silly money because you, you just can't because those guys have to make money as well. And don't get me wrong, there are plenty of people out there who are, they're not worth your time, you know, mm. they will just, you know, rinse you for everything you got. And, but I think you kind of, you start to learn and, and see who those, those customers are. And, you know, and then, you know, eventually yeah. you just go, no, you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not doing it for this because I have bills to pay. So our pricing thing that our pricing is based on our costs. Um, you know, I spent a long time, um, a little while back, um, just really looking at all our costs and, and whatnot. And, um, yeah, so, so I know how low I can go before we're not making anything. Basically mm. I can look at my, I can look at my numbers and go, well, you know, and if I have to turn a client down, you know, and say, look, I can't afford to print for you at these prices, then, then that's, that is what it is. But if I can do it, then of course I will, you know, got yeah. bills to pay. And, um, you know, I want to be, I want to be busy. No, I don't want to work for nothing, but, um, we've just ended up in this space of printing for other people really. Mm. Um, it's just, it's just <laughs> where we're at. And I mean, it's very hard to change what you do. Do you know what I mean? It's like you, you, once you've got a reputation, um, for doing, doing things very quickly and very well um you know it's mm-hmm. it's it's hard to, you know and and specifically for trade you know uh, you know yes. uh, which which is what we do um i think it'd be very difficult to change that to all of a sudden go right we're gonna print for independent clothing brands now and we're gonna double our prices because we need to spend a lot more time on you know getting it you know two mil to the left and three mil up yeah. because that's specifically what they want you know um but i think for me like we don't do any of that stuff because i just don't enjoy it you know yeah. i don't i don't enjoy the you know don't get me wrong i love getting a bang on print but i don't enjoy the oh can you move it two mil up can you move it three mil but down to the never, left just the right they never even give you that that would be an ideal circumstance if they said two mil they go <laughs> yeah. Up a bit, a bit bigger, and you're like, "Bit isn't a measurement, mate. Just stop it." Um, yes, yes. So, in it, when we chatted over a, a year ago, it was a really harsh time for everybody, and and you were like super honest about what was happening in the business, and you were like, there was times when you were even contemplating like, s- like just selling it, just being the printer or whatever, and now we're looking at you and you're like investing in, in all the technologies. Like how has that like turned around? Do you feel like it's, you can rely on all the business and you can do forecasting to understand that you can afford this kit or is no, has anything it's changed? Just, it's a wing and a prayer really, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you just like, you know, for me, um, yeah, I just look at the the whole thing and I think, I mean, don't get me wrong. Like I still feel the same way about certain things like if somebody gave me enough money i would walk away tomorrow 100 percent. yeah you know i don't i don't know many screen printers who who have days where they don't say the same thing do you know what i mean yeah. it's um it's a really tough industry it's a really tough job and it's 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 such an analog process do you know what i mean it's not digital it's not just like oh press this button and then this is done it's like all day long you're making decisions you're making yeah. choices and you're like it's exhausting you know yeah. it's really tiring and 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 things go wrong and then you're you know, like, I mean, most days at the minute, I, you know, I'm up at half five in the morning, you know. You've had and, a hard run with all your kit going down <laughs> recently. <haven't laughs> you? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, well, last week we had, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a silly thing, really. It was, we were moving a press and, the, and a cable, the safety cable got caught and it, and it broke. Um, so um, obviously the press won't run without it because it's, uh, it's, it's to stop you you know, dying if you walk into it. So, um, and we couldn't get, um, we couldn't get the part until Monday. Um, so in the end, we just pay the engineer to just drive down with it, um, on, on that Monday and gets back up and running. But anyway, what was the question? Um, oh, how has it turned around? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Has it really? I don't know. I mean, we had a really tough time beginning of this year, really, really tough time. Um, 
more close to the bone than we'd ever got. We just, everything went quiet in December, which it does for us always. Um, but it usually sort of end of February, it starts picking back up and it just didn't, it didn't. And then it got to the end of March, it still didn't pick up and then got to the yeah. end of April. Um, and all the money that I had, cause I've invested so much in, mm. in, in re- recent years. So instead of taking dividends, I've lived off as little as I possibly could and just invested. Um, uh, and don't get me wrong. Yes. It's a lot of the stuff is on finance, but I paid as big a deposit as I could and things like that. Yeah. Um, um, and so, um, so with that obviously comes a lot of outgoings. Um, and then for the first time ever at the end of the last year, we had a really good year actually. Um, and, um, best, best year than we've ever had by more than triple I think um, wow, brilliant. and we just got really busy um took a couple of people on and then um for, yeah for the first time ever I decided right okay next year as in 2023 I'm I'm actually going to pay myself properly I'm going to take some dividends and I put the money aside and it just all disappeared over the winter period every penny of it and um and luckily we had it in the bank because if we didn't have it in the bank and we it'd be game over. <laughs> so yeah. um, but fortunately we had enough to keep us going. We literally, I think we got down to like the last grand or something, and then all of a sudden it just picked up. Um so we've had a really busy um few months. What are we now? July. So uh, uh, what was that? May, June, July. We're, yeah. we're not we're in August. Are we August? Yeah. Are we in August? Now? I don't even fucking know what happened, but in August. <laughs> it's a joke. So, uh, I don't know. It's mad. It just goes. It just goes. But um, you're like June, yeah. July. We're fine. If we're not, yeah. <laughs> we're yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's been a really good quarter, which is good. But during that quiet time, um, I had to let our screen guy go, which was really hard for me to do. Um, like I'd never in a million years have imagined having to do something like that. And I just, oh, I just felt really hard because I'm really passionate about I, I pay the boys well, and I'm like, I always pay them before I pay myself, and mm. and because I think I, I just feel. That's my responsibility as a business owner, you know, it's, it's the risk I took starting a business and, and whatnot. Anyway, um, yeah, it just got so low in the end that I just, I just, I said, uh, I just had to say, oh mate, I just can't, I can't, yeah. can't keep you on. Um, yeah. you know, it's, it's easy, it's either I let you go or, uh, or I can't pay myself at all. You know, it already, it'd already been a couple of months of, of me not paying myself as well. So I was kind of, I was really close to the edge, you know, but you know, it all sounds doom and gloom, but the excitement, really, the excitement, all that is, is what I live for. I love, I love, I do love that stuff. It's what the keeps chase. me going in the game, mm. really. So, um, but yeah, so it hasn't really turned around now. It's just like you have busy times and quiet times. And, but you've got you caller toys. <laughs> yes, I do have yeah. caller toys. So we, yeah, I mean, like, you know, there's only two of us here now, me and my brother-in-law. And, but nobody, I mean, the amount of work that we put out, nobody did ever think it's, it's just two of us. People are always really surprised, you know, because, uh, and we do so much same day stuff as well, same day and next day stuff. And, you know, we just bang it out. We're just like, yeah, yeah. no problem. Um, and just, I think we've just got so used to doing fast stuff over the years, which is, it's, you yeah. know, it's one of our, our main money makers really is doing things quickly. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's been crazy, but we're still here. Can I ask you about like all the same day stuff? Are you, because it's to trade, this is just like a really tiny little detail, but I'm guessing you never fold stuff. You just like put it in in packs of like five and then just lay them on top because that would be, that wouldn't be adding any value to these trade customers, right? Or do they get you to bag and tag? Sometimes it gets to bag and tag, yeah. Really? Um, so it depends on the job. Uh, we don't do a lot of bagging and tagging, um, uh, but we don't do any same day bagging and tagging stuff. Generally, generally same day stuff. If it's for music industry, it's usually merch that you know, like there's uh, like there's been some days these last couple of weeks where uh, you know the client would deliver the blanks to us at like ten, half ten in the morning, uh, and on a same day courier, and then they'd be collected at one, two o'clock in the afternoon. You know, Whoa, and we'd, that's and so we'd have, bad. <laughs> you know, and we'd have front prints, back prints, sleeve prints, you know, all to do hundreds of pieces and you just, it's just go, go, go. Um, but yeah, so, uh, most of the stuff is not, um, is not fold and bag. Um, it's, but yeah, we do, we do do it, but it's, it's, yeah, it's not usually rush stuff. So yeah, tour stuff, um, it gets stacked in tens and then rolled. Yeah. Um, so they just in rolls and packed tidy in the box. Um, all the bag stuff. I mean, you'll fold tote bags anyway. You just, you know, you just sack them up and chuck them in yeah. a square box and, you know, job done. So, um, but yeah, it's like, um, some of the stuff is actually contract work. So it's, it's basically the client is 
just an you know it's an online website you know um and they sell all sorts from tote bags to blooming like flyers and stuff and yeah. so they have different different suppliers all around yeah. the world um and we happen to be the supplier for screen printed stuff in the uk um and so yeah a customer might come to them at eight o'clock in the morning place an order on their website and it has to be delivered by the next day so we have to get it all done in time for the career to collect at four o'clock in the afternoon um and deliver the next day then yeah so, um, i just I, I just can't live with the it's the horrible anxiety when you you know that you've done your best and you've done your part in that process and then you're watching it being tracked by like fedex or someone and you're like you bastards i i told the customer is you kind of like feel this responsibility yourself don't you for it for it being lost and then you can't focus on your work that day because you're like watching this parcel like just go into the ether yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah just take just, some stress <laughs> we've we've had a few of those times but what we um so with our with with the client that we do all the tote bags and stuff for um so they do everything from prepping the art to they basically just send us a PDF that's oh, already spot spot color. All we got to do is drag it into our uh, Illustrator, create a postscript file for the um, for the spider, and and away mm-hmm. we go. Uh, but they also supply the so they, they have a portal that we log into um, where we download the artwork, the specs of the job, and all that kind of stuff. And then when we complete the job, it automatically spits out uh, DPD labels for us. Oh, so brilliant. the DPD, so they they have a. They, so the collection that we have every day at four o'clock is not on our account; it's on their account. Mm. So, um, so all we have to do is label it up. So if it gets lost or something goes wrong, it's completely out of our hands. So we don't have to worry about it. So Brilliant. it's completely down to them. And the other great thing as well is if there's uh, if there was a problem with the artwork or something, uh, a mistake that wasn't ours because we, we really make mistakes hardly ever. Um, mm. You know, we've we've got our processes dialed in to make so so if there's a mistake, it's often because they've done something wrong on their side with the artwork. The great thing is about it, we don't have to deal with the customer. You know, yeah. we don't have to do we don't, you know, we we shift it out. And if it's their problem, they just put the job through the system again with the correct artwork. We get paid for it twice, you know. So it's you know, for us it's a really nice way to work because I'm such an introvert. Like I'm just I'm I'm rubbish at uh, like trying to go out there and get new business and or yeah, I just want to I just want to be here in my shed and you yeah. know and do what do what I love doing, you know. Um, so yeah, so, so it, but for those guys, there's not actually too much of a worry. And then a lot of the tour stuff, um, the guys will just send us a same day courier anyway. So we don't have to worry about it. It just gets collected by the same day. Um, so we'll, we'll give them a message about an hour before everything's done. They'll send the courier an hour later. It gets picked up and driven straight to the, uh, what do you call it? The, you know, the venue, yeah. uh, wherever it's got to go to. So yeah, so we never worry too much about, um, yeah, losing stuff because it's not really on our head too much. All yeah. we've got to do is focus on our part, get it outdoor. And happy days. Yeah. Um, can I ask you, say if you were to completely just, like the shop is gone, okay, and then you're told you have got a budget, maybe like, I don't know, 100K or something. You have to get back into the into the you know, garment decoration industry, would you choose screen print again? Or would you choose something that's, I know you're saying like quality is a not, no compromise, but would you just go sod it? I'll just do DTG if it was more profitable or DTF, or maybe I'll do embroidery because the margins are higher. If it was an option, I would take the money and run. You can't, you can't, <laughs> you can't run away with this investment. Oh, shame, 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 shame. Um, no, what would I do? Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if it was a couple of years ago, I'd go DTG. Um, not because I like the quality. I don't, I, I'm really not a fan of, of, of the quality. You wouldn't, be able to do, you wouldn't be able to do your output at all. Like you'd be restricted to like 100 genus. I don't know yeah, how they can do it. Don't but you? I think I think uh, I would machine. go down the when I say DTG, I'm talking about the on demand route. Um so oh, rather yeah. than um but then I would ju- I'd be so bored. I know. So freaking bored because there's no there's no creativity in the I same know. in the same way. You know, I mean, yeah, okay, there might be creativity and you know, you might have to spend your time helping helping customers with designs and stuff like that. But I don't know, like screen printing is such an art, you know, and I think See, when I started my business, my goal was never to have a big company. My goal was to become 
the best screen printer mm. that I could be, you yeah. know? Um, and I do feel like I've achieved that. It's not, I don't mean in the sense of like, Oh yeah, look at me. Uh, but I mean, I mean, you're learning stuff every single day. Don't get me wrong. Mm. I like, I feel like I go to school every day. Sometimes I come across problems. I'm like, Oh man, I've been doing this for 10 years and I've never had this, <laughs> this problem. Yeah. But what I, what I mean is, is, is my, my goal and my challenge that I set myself was to produce a really good print, um, on you know, different types of artwork and different types of garments. And, and, and I can do that. I do it day in, day out really quickly, you know? Um, and, and I feel like, I feel like there's not much challenge here anymore, mm-hmm. in, in that, mm-hmm. in that sense. Mm-hmm. Um, the challenge more now would be to try and grow and expand the business to become bigger, but I'm not really passionate enough about the business side of this industry to go, yeah, I want to, I want to take over the world, you know? Um, uh, yeah, I just think there's so many variables all the time. It's so difficult to, um, even though we've, we've dialed in a lot of stuff, there's still so many variables every day. So, so many choices that I have to make on behalf of the guys. And, mm. you know, uh, I say the guys is just me and my brother-in-law now, but, um, yeah. So I, I don't know, like on one, one hand, if it was, a, if it was a money choice, I probably would go DTG. Cause I think that a lot of the future is in digital. Um, yeah. But if it was for the love of it choice, then yeah, I would choose screen printing all over again. Um, hundred yeah. percent. Cause I think that, yeah, I just, I still think it's the best quality, um, stuff out there. If you know what you're doing, you know, if you're, if you're a crap printer, um, then that's a different story as you know, but, um, yeah, I, I yeah. Hopefully that comes across right. The, it does. No, it does. Because I can see that you're, passionate about it and you know what you're talking about by just the way you break down your prints so you're talking about like the shore of the squeegees and like the choices you made with this ink versus that ink and flashing your white but not then doing like wet on wet and that type of thing if you don't know what you're talking about you're going to treat every design the same because Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you don't care care if it you know (laughs) <laughs> you don't care if like it's oversaturated at the end or if you've got fibrillation, whereas you're, you are like breaking it down, like kind of like a chef and a menu treating the ingredients in the, in a certain way. So, yeah. 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 And that's probably why people send you the difficult shit because they just can't be bothered to learn it. But mm-hmm. I, how much of it are you, I know, I, I think you've told um, me before, but you tend to bring it into set studio, but do your own tweaks on Photoshop. Like, are you still doing a lot of the artworking yourself or is that a part that you would ever like give to somebody else and yeah, just take so the raw files? I still do all the steps. I asked, yeah. uh, over the last couple of years, so many times I've, I've, I've tried to push myself to, to farm it out, to remove myself from the process. So I was last year, I, you know, because we were so busy, I was on a bit of a mission to remove myself from as much of the process so I could focus mm. on the business more. Um, but after we hit that quiet period and stuff, I was like, ah, stuff this is like, I can make a better living for myself with just two of us here, you know? And I just, it means, yeah, I, I don't get much of a break. It means that I, you know, I'm constantly involved in most of the processes, but that's also part of why we're so quick because Mm. we can be flexible. You know, we can change things. We can swap a job out really quickly and it doesn't affect a long line of, do you know what I mean? Production and people, um, you know, who, who, who set up something, a job here to be you know done there at that time or whatever, we can just go bang, bang, bang. We'll just move that over there. We'll change this. We'll chuck it on press and we'll go, you know, mm. and we'll just get it done. Um, so, um, going back to the question, what was the question? <laughs> it was like separate. Uh, it's removing yourself oh, from yeah. art, artwork. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, um, I did, uh, farm a few bits out to different separators and whatnot. Um, but just every time they came back, we had to make changes. We had to, it was never a case of throw it on press, you know, mix the colors, stick the squeegees in and, you know, off we go. Um, and, it, and that, you know, it wasn't just, that wasn't just me being fussy. It was, uh, obviously I had a couple of guys at the time and they, they'd always say the same thing. They'd just say, you know, every time we, you don't do the steps, you know, we have, we have problems on press. And so, I mean, that might not necessarily be, the color separate, it might just be because this is the way I've always done it and learned to do it that, you know, I'm very specific maybe in the way that I work and a way that mm. I've taught the guys or whatever. Um, you know, so that's not to say that 
the separators are not great. I mean, you know, they, they, this is what they do every day for loads of other printers, but it just didn't work for us. It just, yeah. What were the things that were like being flagged up, but on press, like, what was it like just, too much just underbase like, or just, uh, it's just random. Just, just, it just didn't look like it was supposed to look, didn't look enough like the artwork. You know, we had to remix a color. We had to, you know, up the saturation on a screen and remake a screen or, you know, um, I, and I think maybe it is just because I've just dialed in my way of doing it, mm. you know, so much that I'm used to it. I know that when I do a separation, you know, on Photoshop, you know, I know that 99% of the time it'll look exactly how my sep looks on Photoshop. And, 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 and that doesn't matter whether I start in sep studio or whatever, you know, because I always finish in Photoshop. I always set my levels and my, um, my opacities and all that stuff in, in Photoshop because it's just, you know, I guess I've just tweaked things over the years to, you know, to, you know, between doing that and being on press so much, mm. you know, mm. every day, um, just got it to a place where I know it works. And the thing is, because we work so fast, um, nobody can keep up with us anyway. Yeah. So, you know, and some of the guys are really quick, but it's still not quick enough, you know, because, mm. you know, I, I'm at a place where I can, I can get a six color job in and sometimes I can have it set in 10 minutes you know, and it's already on the rip in the screen room, you know? Um, and, and, and it's, it's, again, it's, it's not, it's not an arrogance thing. It's just, it's just how we've learned to work, you know? Mm. And so if I add then another step in that process, which is sending it to somebody else, waiting for them to look at it, do the step and send it back, even if they're like lightning fast and they do it straight away, um, I still, uh, I've still got to wait. There's still an hour or so in there somewhere, you know, and that's an hour where, you know, the screens could have been made in 20 minutes and they could have had 40 minutes to dry. They could be re-exposed and taped and down ready by the press by then, you know? Mm. So it, it's, yeah. So it, it's, it's always a real tricky one, I think, because, you know, there's no hope in hell of me ever selling this business if I don't remove myself from yeah. the process. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, uh, but at the same time, <sighs> Uh, I don't know, like, like my biggest stress every single day is getting home to be a father and a husband, you know, because I don't want to be here longer than I need to be here, you know, as much as I love it. And I love coming to work, love getting up at crack of dawn and being in work before, before the kids are even awake uh, a lot of the time, you know, but, um, but at the same time, it's like anything that adds more minutes or hours to my day, I'm not interested in it because right now my focus is on raising my kids you know, because they're not going to be here forever. Do you know what I mean? And and yeah. so, and so for me, it's it's all about saving those minutes and those seconds, um, so that I can try and get home at a decent time. You know, such a difficult conundrum, isn't it? Because you have to, yeah, you have to have the time to give yourself time, and then you've also got to put in lots of effort where you're not seeing the benefits of it for years. Like you'd have to probably train someone. You'd have to get someone in now to shadow you, to understand your process's way of separating it. Mm -hmm. And then you won't see the benefit. You won't have any extra income coming from this person shadowing you for ages, mm -hmm. which is like an expense that you probably haven't factored in or can factor in. So it's, it's very, very tricky. This is the most difficult point in, in growing a business. I think like the, going yeah. from like the, the one, the owner operator to having somebody there to then grow into five to 10. It's, it's this bit, which is the, the, the most sticky part, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty hard. Yeah. Um, can I ask you what your unpopular opinion in the screen print industry is? What do you hear everyone go on about? And you're like, ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> I don't know, actually. You got your head know. down too much. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, don't get me wrong. I talk to printers all the time. It's great. I love it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I think I'm trying to think of stuff that we moan about, but the only thing we moan about is clients not paying on time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but unpopular opinion. I don't know. I got nothing. Is there anything that any uh, like you hear other printers focus on and you're like, that's not bloody important. You need to just be getting product out the door. Um, no, not really. Cause I think the, I'd say the guys that I speak to most 
are guys where I really respect their work. Um, so, because there's loads of printers out there who are crap printers. Let's just not be around the bush. There's loads of awful stuff in there, you yes. know. And especially in the industry that we're in, you know, a yeah. lot of our competitors, uh, like even pictures they put up on Facebook, you can see from you know this far away how much fibrillation is in you know and how thick the print is or, or whatever. And a lot of it comes down to it's just because they're just business guys. They're not printers. They're, they're, they're guys in business or who or guys who love the music scene, but uh, shouldn't be printing. Um, you know, to put it, put it, uh, put it we, we had to, we had to walk out of a shop the other day because M picked up about three shirts and she was like, blurred. And then she was like, yeah. you'd never let that out. And then she was like, look at these two shirts. One of them was like pink and the other one was red. And I was like, mm. they were like shirts next to each other. It's like, there's no consistency. And I said, yeah. should we just, should we just go then? She was like, this isn't like, this isn't a fun retail experience anymore. <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is just like getting your yeah. blood, your, your blood pressure up too high. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> it's so true. It is so true, man. There is, uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad stuff out there, but they're all making way more money than I am. So That's, I don't know. That, that is one point because I was talking to this guy called Mike Chong and he was like, to be honest, um, screen printing, he probably wouldn't do it again. He'd probably just whack everything on DTF, just churn it out because uh, it's about making money. And he thinks that, that screen printers are hung up on the craft a bit too much. And it's about you're in this for a business, but yeah. I just can't, I can't go all the way in with that idea. I kind of want, I do accidentally put like some, some of myself in my business and link, link the two. We should be unlinked, but I can't help it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause yeah, yeah. if we think yeah. about Supreme Scream and then we think about Alex. Yeah. If you weren't mm -hmm. physically in there, maybe it'd be easier to separate the work and the person, but you are. Um, yeah. I can see all that nice box of AS color. That's oh, yeah. pretty, pretty premium. Oh, it's a nice stack. Yeah. Um, what, what, what's going on those? Is that music merch or is it? Um... Uh, that is, uh, yeah, it is. It is music merch. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't even know what it's for yet. Actually. Um, I have no idea, but yeah, <laughs> music merch. Yeah. We, at the moment it's mainly music merch that we're doing. So yeah, it's good. It's keeping us busy. Um, so just, what was it? Make hay yeah. when the sun shines or something like that? No? Yeah, exactly. So I heard you've got like this spider. Is there, did you, did you do any deliberations with other kind of like screen machines? Cause like there's loads now, isn't there? There's like laser LTS. There's like the wax one. There's, there's so many options. Like what made you pick the spider, do you reckon? Uh, I went through a, uh, maybe we didn't talk about this before. I went through um, a bit of a long process with the freestyler. Did we talk about this before? I don't know. Maybe. I, basically, when, when we moved into this, this premises, um, I decided that I wanted to get direct to screen. Um, for, well, for a number of reasons, but, um, so I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll give a, we'll give the freestyler a shot. Anyway, we, we had lots of problems for, for a long time and to be fair some of those problems would probably just because you know I'm all about being really good and you know doing a great job and you know the details matter you know whereas you know perhaps some some of the people aren't too bothered about it, they just want to bang out whatever you know so um anyway used that for about 18 months and eventually it's just like oh I can't do this anymore screw it I, we'll just get the spider mm. um and so we got the spider um and then what was the question? What kind of, techno what kind of technology does the spider use? Oh oh yeah, wax, wax, wax. Mm. Yes, mm. whereas the freestyler was um water based. Um mm. so oh. which is interesting when you think, oh okay, emulsion with water on it. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't sound that right, but it did it did sort of work, just didn't work good enough for me. Um, so anyway, I went with the spider, which is the wax unit. Um, but, uh, to be honest, I'd, I'd rather have laser, but it's so expensive. Mm. It's so expensive. And it, it it's, um, it, in fact, I actually went on a bit of a journey to start developing my own laser, um, 
Uh, wow. uh, I set up a company uh, with a business partner. We we got a couple of universities on board and um, started looking into all the te- technology, all that kind of stuff, started designing. Um, but in the end, it was like, we realized there's already so much technology out there that is already doing it. You know, we're mm. trying to, just trying to reinvent a wheel. And although we're all talking about this stuff and going, Oh, this, this is new tech. It's not new tech. You know, it's like, it's been around for a long time in other industries. It's just that, um, we just never really used it in this industry. Um, Mm -hmm. so in the end, uh, long story short, I knocked it on the head. Um, uh, it it was also going to be really expensive to develop as well. Um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands plus, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and I also realized, actually, I don't want to run a business and be a salesman and trying to sell machines to people. I couldn't think of anything worse, you know? <laughs> um, so anyway, knocked that on the head. Um, but I, I would love laser, but, you know, because... Maybe it's going to get is, cheaper. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe it will. I mean, like the, the spider, the wax machine, it has a, you know, it has a print head and print heads always go wrong. It doesn't yeah. matter what you, doesn't matter what you buy, print heads, whether, you know, whether it's some apps and whatever or you know print heads are always going to have issues no matter what you do um and i want the thing is i the thing i love about screen printing is like you, you don't have print heads do you know what i mean it's like if something goes wrong you just remake a screen or you hmm. you know um and i i love that about it if you know what i mean whereas yeah. you know i hate coming in one day and spider's not working because it's you know i don't know whatever a nozzle got blocked or or something so we've actually got to a point now where we just leave it on 24 7 we never turn it off um so i hate to think how much it costs to, to keep the wax at 110 degrees 24 7 but wow. it it gives us less problems by leaving it on you know it means that the you know you just come in you whack a screen on and you press go and it's you know most of the time 99 percent of the time it's all right yeah. you know Maybe um, you should calculate it because probably it's probably equal to that laser. If you're keeping this one going maybe, all the time, maybe, maybe that you could justify that to like yourself. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, now it's time to swap yeah. this out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe I should. Um, we we rent it actually. We didn't buy it, um, so we rent it from Exile. All right. And um, I didn't want to buy it because you rent um, it. So is that like? Yeah, rent- um, like when you have a car on higher purchase or something? Um, sort of. Yeah. Sort of. Um, but we, like if I wanted to give it back now, I'd give three months notice and give it back. Um, That's cool. But you, you, you sign up. I think I signed up for a minimum 12 months. Um, but we've had it. I think we're in our fifth quarter or something now. Mm. Um, but it's great because it just, you rent it and then it just means that any maintenance and stuff is, is all covered in your, your cost. It's expensive. Brilliant. But I'd rather pay that every month and not worry about having to fix yeah. a print head for I don't know four grand or something when it goes, you know. So um, yeah, so it, I mean, it works for us right now. Um, ideally, I'd have laser, but the truth is, is I've been doing this ten years and I'm still not taking a decent wage, so I have to stop spending money now. I don't really, I don't really have much <laughs> choice. We, um, uh, I say that I have just bought a new press. Um, so we've got a 14 station 10 color coming Brilliant. in September, which I'm looking forward to. Um, so this little press is going to be going um, to a fellow printer. Yay. And we, we bought ours used from another printer. So um, Did you do that like um, just printer to printer? Did you cut out all those stupid... Vulture middlemen. Oh, <laughs> yeah, passion, was, passionately <laughs> aggressive against these weird little vultures that go on like auction sites uh, and then um, they're like promising this this printer to this printer and they haven't even got it. It's like yeah. we can all go on auction sites, mate, and we all talk to each other anyway, so we don't need you anymore. Uh, Cut them out. That's it, that's it. No, it, 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 it was never like that. It just came up in conversation and Good. um somebody said, Oh, I know somebody selling this and so I was like, oh, interested. And then somebody somebody else said, oh, if you buy that, I'll buy yours. And so I was like, oh, great. Then, yeah. you know, so um, so it hasn't actually cost me anything. You know, I've sold mine. Mine's, mine's a lot newer than the one I bought. Um, so I've sold mine for the same price as I bought the big ones. So it's Brilliant. not, it's only going to cost, you know, uh, installation and transportation really, which I mean, that itself adds up to a good few grand. But um, it just means that we're, we're, we're not as limited. So with a, with an eight color, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we do that we we have to work really hard. 
mm. um, to get the results because you know send it round a couple of times or 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 you you, you know you you're trying to print a job water base and it's too stressful because you haven't got enough cooling stations yeah. and you know all that kind of stuff so um and same as as in our last, last conversation whenever it was I was talking about virus inks and I'm, yes. I'm really passionate about moving onto virus more um and by upgrading this press it's, it's hopefully going to allow us to be able to do that a lot easier so yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm really looking forward to that, really. So, but apart from that, I I have to stop spending money because I have to start earning a living. So, um, but do you know the whole like earning a living thing? Uh, I was I used to run the business and then wait to see if there was any money, and then if I desperately needed something personally, then I would give myself a wage, and it was so stressful, <laughs> horrendous, and I'd be like watching all the flow of money and I just, there would never be enough because you're never the top priority. Like then I put in profit first and stuff and it already pre-allocated me my money. So Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm allowed to take that and I'm not suffocating the business because it's already worked out the operating expenses and overheads and profit of the business. Like, are you are you reluctant to put in a system like that because you feel like you're taking from the business or is- no i just i just i wanted to get all my investment out of the way uh, i wanted to get all my gear bought and cuz we this this place is is a printer's dream it's yeah. it's like you know it's um yeah it's not massive it's only 1600 square foot we added an extra 600 square foot with the with the mezzanine, mezzanine. um mm-hmm. but we have everything a screen printer could want you know mm-hmm. and and still only two of us here. So for me, um, putting my money into buying equipment and to paying my guys well, um, or now my one guy well, um, for me, that was a priority because I, number one, I want people to have the incentive to stick around. You know, I don't want them to be like in some crappy minimum wage mm-hmm. job. And then, do you know what I mean? And then yeah, spend a couple, a couple of years learning learning how to do something and then they become worth more to me, but I'm not willing to pay them more. That's just that's just nonsense in, in my mm-hmm. opinion. So um so putting my money into a human obviously is, you know, is definitely a priority. And then putting my money into equipment. Uh because equipment doesn't call in sick, doesn't have hard times, does you know, you don't have to rely on it to uh, do you know what I mean? Whether it's yeah. like it's in a bad mood or a good mood, it's, it's just an asset. Uh, yeah, yeah. As long as as long as there's no problem with the gear, you press a button, it does what it's meant to do. You know. Um, mm-hmm. So for me, it was about spending my profits on getting all this stuff to where it is now, um, mm-hmm. which is a little ironic because now I'm like, mm, <laughs> you know, it's like I love doing what I do every day, but. I think it's it's the dealing with clients that drives me insane. So, um, but yeah, so, and for me now, I mean, I just take a, you know, my basic director's wage, obviously, like every company does, yeah. every company only does, and then, and then whatever dividends on top. So up until uh, earlier this year, my wife was employed as well. So we both took director's wage and then, you know, what, just what little bits we could really. Um, but she, she's just finished a nursing degree and is now a full-time nurse. So uh, she's no longer on payroll. So, it's just a case of me focusing on taking my director's wage and taking dividends, you know? Mm. Um, and so, but I'm always, that's, this is the problem is I'm always tempted to buy more gear, you know, mm. because you're like, Oh, well, if we have this, then this will take like, some time here. You know, you allow yourself to go to the trade shows. Uh, I know you I went to print but that was for like mates, wasn't it? That was just for, yeah, it was just, <laughs> yeah. And I was only there for like an hour. So, um, um, but yeah, no, I mean, the truth is I don't need anything else. I say that I do need <laughs> another, an, an extra couple of meters on my dryer because when we're going flat out, it's just a little bit slow when we're printing water base. So, um, so obviously this new press is coming in, which has, you know, it's only cost me a couple of grand. So I'm kind of justifying that. And then, <laughs> um, and then it's about 12 grand or something to add a couple of meters to the dryer. Um, so I think we're going to do that just because, um, uh, you know, even when it's just one of us loading and unloading the press and the other one's catching, we, we just move so quick now that the, if you're, if you, you know, if you're, you're printing with HB and, you know, and you, you want a two and a half minute dwell time, you, you, mm. you know, you're slowed down by the dryer. Um, so adding an extra couple of meters will mean we can get a bit more speed through there. And if, if down the line it gets too busy for one press, we can, 
add another press and, you know, hopefully run out and dry. But I'm trying to ignore any temptation to buy any gear now because yeah, five kids is expensive. So I got to keep, I got to keep telling myself that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is funny. It's amazing what you're managing to actually juggle with all of this stuff. Cause also they're on the school holidays. Yes, they are. Look a nightmare. How are you doing this? Well, they're with the uh, nan at the moment. So oh, okay. yeah, it, it is a bit of a nightmare. So, cause my wife is working full time now. So she works, uh, she's a nurse for the NHS. So she works, um, three, 12 hour shifts a week. So she, so when she's on shift, she's up at half five and then out she goes. Um, and I'm normally up at the same time cause I will try and get into work. Um, cause my, my, uh, my oldest, uh, my eldest kids, my eldest boys are, at, uh, they're a bit older now. So they're old enough to look after the younger ones at the same mm. time. Um, so we're at that point now where we can go on a date night, leave them at home and all that kind of stuff. So, nice. um, so I'll head out at the same time as here in the morning. I'll head out, go and do an hour's work. I'll go to the gym and then I'll race back to do school run and then I'll drop the ball at school and then I'll race back to work for nine o'clock and then, you know, hit my day. And then, but usually luckily if the wife is working, then her mum will pick the kids up from school. And, um, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. It's, it's the evening clubs that are the worst. Oh my goodness. Mm. Like you would not believe how many how many clubs we've got to do every evening. It's, it's insane. So like, most, 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 judo, most you're not. like, stop looking at toys and judo and musical instruments. And it's, honestly, it's <laughs> mental. And it's like, but the wife, the wife, she just keeps signing them all up. She's like, Oh, you want, Oh yeah, you can go to that. But it is, I mean, it's, it's amazing for their confidence, but mm. I mean, like I, I, as I say, our days will start at half five and then, you know, but they don't finish till nine, half nine. And then you just like, but, <laughs> You know, do you think you're going to burn out, Alex? Do you like how 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 long can you do this for? I think it's just like a. I don't know. Can uh, you? I, but well, maybe in, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I like. Uh, I enjoy the challenge. I've actually just started another business, so I'm opening a pizzeria in um, the next couple of months. So um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're joking or not. Like, what are you? No, doing? no, genuine. I'm opening a pizza place. I just I um. Uh, it's well, we've been working on it for about a year, uh, oh, but nice. it's something I've been doing actually with my kids. So I didn't want to do another thing. Oh, that's thing, brilliant. But, so, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, so they're actually going to work with me in it on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, we've got a place in, in town that's having a new shop front put on. We've just had our, um, pizza oven come over from Brazil, had it oh, custom nice. built and yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun. So, oh, I saw that and I was like, what is this? Like I saw that on your thing and, and then didn't they send you the wrong one? Yeah. Yeah, so the wrong one is still sitting in my unit right now. I'm waiting for them to pick it up and give me the right one. (laughs) Oh, my God. That is awesome to do the family business thing. So, yeah, that's just insane, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it will be good fun. I have got a business partner as well. So that'll be a massive help. And um, I think I've learned so many things from running this business over the last 10 years of how not to do something or how I would do things differently. And um uh, it feels really good actually knowing that I'm going to implement all that stuff in this new business from, from the get go, you know? Mm, yeah. Are you, so for the pizza business, like what things can you translate over? Is it going to be standardizing things or is it going to be the way you interact with customers or like what kind of things do you reckon you can push over? Uh, automation for starters. That's a huge one. Like dominoes. Um, like how they do like yeah. five bits of pepperoni and like, have you seen, have um, you seen those championships where they can do a pizza in a minute? No. <laughs> yeah. They, they, Domino's genuinely have competitions annually and they get the fastest pizza makers in all the different shops and then they compete globally. No, I need, yeah. I need to you, check you, this out. you do YouTube it. It's amazing. And it's like, oh, do you know those people who do make Rubik's cubes? They're like that, but for yeah. pizza. But for pizza. That's mental. Mental. Um, yeah. yeah. So automation anyway, is definitely, um, is definitely, uh, one of the, one of the biggest things. Um, so that, you know, just systems, getting systems in place, um, <clears throat> dialing stuff in from the get go. Um, yeah, it's just, I think that is, that is huge. But again, with screen printing, there's only so much you can standardize because mm. there are still so many variables. Whereas mm. with pizza, it's like, yeah, what variable is there? Well, you don't want pepperoni. Okay. I won't put pepperoni on it. You know, it's like, yeah. it's, yeah, like it's fine. You're, you're not relying on somebody to use their years of experience to make a decision 
no. you know, that affects the outcome of the job. Um, and yeah. that's what I'm re- really looking forward to. That and the fact that people pay for pizza there and then. They don't yeah. get you pizza and then go, we'll pay you in 30 days, but still 45, 60 days later, still haven't paid you. So that yeah. I'm really looking forward to, you know, um, uh, just doing something completely different in a completely different industry. Um, yeah. uh, having a business partner, that's a massive thing. Yeah. Because going it alone is so hard, man. It's so hard because you, you know, I think a lot of time people's idea is that, oh yeah, but then I've got to share the profits. And you're like, well, for starters, what profits, you know, yeah. if you're not making, do you know what I mean? if you're not making profits because you're not running the business very well or you're not, do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, hundred percent of zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah. So just knowing all that, yeah, you share, you share the good stuff, but you also share the hard stuff. And, you know, it's such a lonely journey running, running a business, you know? And like, I mean, even my wife, she's like, she has no idea, like, because she, you know, she'll ask how the day was and say, yeah, this happened or that happened or, or whatever. But, you know, even though I had her on payroll, she just came in now and again to help here. You know, she's never actually been part of running the business. So mm. even in my conversations with my own wife, there's only so much she knows or understands, you know, it's, unless you're actually in that position and doing it, you know. Um, and that's what I love about kind of these Discord groups with different printers and stuff, because, it feels so good yeah. to talk about something or to hear somebody else talk about something knowing, ah, oh, man, I know exactly how you feel. I know mm. exactly what happens when, you know, or you're going, oh, boys, I'm stuck on this. Has anybody ever come across this? And they go, oh, yeah, actually, yeah. I did, you know, I came across this. It took me like a year to figure out, but this was the answer, you know? Mm. Um, so, yeah, not going it alone is definitely a huge thing that that, that I've taken from, from this. But, um, you know, I think to have run this business for 10 years and invested, I don't know what quarter of a million pounds or something in equipment or whatever it is, you know, it's like, I'm proud of you. And I shouldn't even have to be proud of you. I think think it's brilliant. I think, yeah, you're a real example. The thing is like, if I wanted to bring somebody on board at this point, it's like, how, how, I've done all the hard work. Have you done, have you, thought about any consultants for any part of the business have you had people in trying to tweak stuff yet uh what do you mean like as in from the well, on, like, on the business on the business side you mean well like people like tony palmer and stuff like, oh yeah they just come in and, yeah yeah we, we, uh, we had tony down when we first bought our mhm actually mm. um he came in and showed us a um different things like how does it zero out all the red positions and all that kind of stuff yeah it was done for a couple of days massive help yeah really really good but um i think um like tony's expertise i as far as i'm aware is 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 print you know um and like he's he's amazing at that and he's he's great to always chat about that kind of stuff um whether he's um a businessman in that sense because that's the difference isn't it it's like i'm a printer i'm a creative guy who's in business i'm not I'm not a businessman, you know, in the sense that I can be ruthless mm. and I can make decisions and like, I'm too emotional and too like, mm-hmm. I'm too like, Oh crap. Uh, you know, like even, even trying to chase somebody for money, you know, it's like, Oh, I like, you know, trying to tell somebody they're overdue or they've, they've used up the credit limit. It's like, I sit there and for about an hour trying to, <laughs> trying to read the email, you know? And like, the thing is half the time they read it, they don't even respond. They probably they, they just do ignore it, for it each other. you know? I've said this yeah, lots of times, yeah, but we should we just should. go, this is the situation, you do it for me and I'll do it for you. Whereas I am at, this This came up recently with um, this like movie studio and it was like a rush thing. And I forgot, God knows why I took it on. And then Em said, you're getting paid up front for that because movie studios are the worst. Like the bigger the company, the worse they are. And I said, yeah, but he needs it like this afternoon and... And, oh, they haven't got me on their account. So she's like, I don't give a shit. They're not getting it until they put the money in your hand or in your bank account. And they really pushed. They even had somebody come down to collect them in person. And I just went, no, sorry, you need to talk to your boss. You need to go get this paid. They went to a cash machine, Alex. Mm. They went to a cash machine. They they went to two different cash machines, got me the cash, put it in my hand because that's how much they needed it. It's always... It's like I'm doing a job for um, SC Johnson um, and they have to pay me by 12 p.m. tomorrow. They don't get it. It's like, shit. They Because they've rushed me. I I just took on this, like, <laughs> I just do it. I just cherry pick the absolute best ones and they don't come up very often. But 
if they don't pay me by 12 p.m., they don't get the job. It's just yeah. ruthlessness. And the yeah. accounts department's like, who's this bastard making me stop what I'm doing and pay them? But you need an M. Everyone needs an M. Yes. Yeah, she does that's, not that's, take the shit. Yeah, that's that's what I suck at. We, um, I mean, if it's a customer who who never placed an order with before, obviously we, you know, we say, look, you you know, you have to you have to pay it, and we, you know, and and we did it for when was it last summer? Yeah, it was a rush order for. I might have talked about it before. Reading and Leeds, and but the person paying the paying for the Sick. putting the order in, uh, you know, we never worked for, and you know, it was like a next day job. 800 hoods or something, multicolors, front and back, different designs and stuff. And, you know, and we said, look, it's got to be, it's got to be paid. And they did, they, they paid it within hours, you know, mm. and, um, you know, it's a lot of money as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, so yes, it can be done. But um, the problem is, is most of our clients, as I say, are B2B, they, they're used to 30 or 60 day uh, terms. And it, the difficulty is, it's like, if you want to do the work, then, that's you where they're threatening to. you. That's the threat they'll put on you, but it's actually rarely the, they're just putting that terms on the person who's not the weakest, but not the strongest in terms of their, their like how they're being treated. Yeah, you, you say that, but last year I put my foot down Did you? and I no. lost a quarter of a million pound a year client. So. Okay, <laughs> maybe I'm yeah. full of shit. So yeah. what so, they you called you called them on it and then yep. they called you bluff. Well, it wasn't a bluff, yep. but they just and changed it, it their was, terms. It was the first time I'd ever really put my foot down and said I'm not doing any more work to pay mm. bills. I think they they were just some like forty or fifty grand at the time. Well, that's and, reasonable. Um, yeah, and I put my foot down and they dropped us next day. So it's like, so it's a tough one. Do you know what I mean? Cause then the, the other opposite side of that argument is like, well, do you want to work for people like that anyway? Like, no. well, no, but I do want to make a living. And even though they pay late, they do eventually pay. And it's like, so it's like, it's really hard to weigh up. Do you know what I mean? Because mm. at the time, obviously I had more than just my brother-in-law here. You know, I have machines to pay for all that kind of stuff. And it's like, on one hand, you, you know, uh, don't get me wrong. I try to put things across really nicely. I, I say, look, guys, I'm not trying to be a dick here. I just, I need money. Uh, I need it in the bank and I need to pay my bills. Um, because ultimately we're bankrolling their entire business, yeah. you know, because yeah. they, but they, they just don't care. No, people just don't care. They really don't care. And so, you know, I can either cry like a baby um, uh, or suck it up and just get on with it. Um, and do what I can to try and get people to pay on time and just deal with it really. And it's like, and that's, that's the part I hate most about this industry. Um, it, you know, in it kind of where we're at, you know, that's the part that gets me down and I'll go home sometimes and be just like, oh, so frustrated because, you know, somebody is like, I don't know, 20 grand overdue, you know, by 30 days, you know, so they're 60 days in since an order, you know, since, since those, those orders were placed or whatever, and then you're you've paid for all you know, the garments and yeah, stuff. Yeah, you've paid probably. for all the garments yeah. and you're, you know, and so and so your bills are due. Mm. And so and there's you know, there's sometimes where I've just got to get my personal credit cards out and you know, just you know, just suck it up and just get it done. And, and eventually the money will come in. Um, but um but yeah, it's I just, risky I just though, isn't it? Because they can go yeah. under, they can I've I've got oh, this yeah. guy down the road who changed his business name three times. Thank God I was a right little bulldog with him and I wouldn't let go of my oh, money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said in the um yeah. So but that's what the they're doing this now. Right now, lots of businesses can't pay their bounce back loans and repayments. I was talking mm -hmm. to my accountant about it. And she said, now they're all like going down like little dominoes because they've stretched their credit. They're they're paying just interest only. Mm -hmm. They've got other businesses' money and they will even if their best intentions when they first met you and they think you're a nice guy and they've got a good relationship with you, they, they can't, they can't just whip up money out of nowhere. They, they're, they're out. So if they take your 50 K it's, it's horrendous. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. It's very yeah. scary. I, it is, I understand it, it why is, it's stressful. Yeah, it is. It is risky. Um, but uh, I'm just like, it is what it is. We did, we did have one client. We had to forfeit, I think 12 grand or something they owed us. Um, and, um, but you know, it's just, it's just money at the end of the day, like, you know, is what it is. So, you know, I mean, what's the alternative? I, you know, 
change the industry that I'm in. You know, I can't really be bothered to be honest. I'd rather just keep going mm. for now and, you know, for as long as I can. And, you know, and just. Maybe yeah. it's pe- I mean, pieces I, I, and debt collection is your next business. Debt <laughs> collection. Send the well, boys around. That's what. Yeah. Yeah. Ebb's granny used to around. say that. So yeah, so I don't know. Is. I don't know. It's definitely, uh, yeah, it's the, I would say it's definitely the, the part I find hardest. It's not, it's not the, it's not the so much because I want the money in my pocket. No, it's, I the, know. it's the frustration of, hang on a second, you owe me 20 grand. Um, I've been chasing this for this many weeks and you are still placing an order that you want delivered tomorrow. Mm. Um, and, and I think the biggest part for me, this is where I'm not good at business. You see, and I'm too emotional is that, I put everything into delivering mm-hmm. that product on mm-hmm. time. Like we never miss deadlines ever. We missed one deadline last week because our press broke down and that's only the second deadline I have ever missed in my entire 10 years of, of mm-hmm. printing, you know? Um, and so I'm really passionate about getting people, getting what they pay for. I'm like, mm-hmm. look, you've come to me, you're trusting me with your product. And so I am going to make sure you get, you know, what you're paying for mm. um and then you work so hard to do that and then people just they just don't repay the favor by paying the bill it's like that's that's the part that kind of goes yeah you know, kind of yeah so but as i say it's just it is what it is i'm not going to be doing this forever i'm not going to do it till i retire you know definitely no interest in in doing this forever but um you know but i think yeah probably i mean if i had a if i had a business partner in this who was more focused on the business side of it and a lot more of a hard ass than me. Um, then, you know, we'd probably be a good team. Um, mm. but you know, as I say, I'm 10 years in, I've spent all this money. What am I going to do? Get somebody to buy in. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's nobody's going to have that kind of money to go. Yeah. Okay. I'll buy in at a fair, uh, a fair price here because it's, you know, if, if they, if they already have that kind of money, then they're not going to be looking to take on a little screen printing shop probably. Well, so, you know, yeah, maybe, but, I used to have a, oh God, I forgot what it is. It's basically a franchise digital printing business, but they also had little branches with, um, you know, screen print. But those, right. those huge companies did a lot of in-house, um, screen print, um, digital work. But why wouldn't one of those like want to absorb at their own screen printing department? If it was like fully fledged working really beautifully, they probably would. I know you're saying yeah. it's not sellable because you're the you're the most important part in the in the system at the moment because you're the knowledge. But mm-hmm. mm. yeah, I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I have thought about it. Yeah, I have thought about it multiple times. I'm like, well, you know, some of the clients that we print for, like, they would make so much more money if they just owned their own shop. Mm. But most of the people we work with, they don't want the fact of running their own shop. They don't want the responsibility of it. They don't want the. Do you know what I mean? Because for mm-hmm. them. If they're not busy, it's not costing them anything, you mm. know. Whereas for me, if it's not busy, it's costing me like I don't know, grand a day or whatever it is, you know. Mm. It's like, um, and and that's what I find with, with a lot of these guys is that they want you to bankroll it and have all the risk, you know. Um, and so, and they just want to sort of sit at home on their computer and get the orders in because that's what they're good at. They're good at getting, yeah. going after the orders. They're good at going, and don't get me wrong, not every client is like this. Obviously, I'm just having a win here, you know, publicly for everybody in the world to, yeah, to, yeah. to look back on. So, but you're um, just sure, I think you're showing that like, it's not all rainbows in like the trade printing just because you got rid of the customer interaction and it's not yeah. great in the customer interaction space. There's like different problems in different sectors yeah. of the industry so yeah no one's problem well, yeah, free it's, it's just it's, this is just the reality of it isn't it it's just mm. you know i think i think so very often people are good at um you know they're good at instagram they're good at making it look good looking amazing looking you know it's like you know i've been painting my shop and making it look great and you know everybody's like oh man that's amazing that's inspired me to do my shop blah 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 and but the truth is, it's like, it's really boring, isn't it? I'm just painting my shop. I'm just, do you know what I mean? I'm trying to make it look nice. And it's like, but it's like, and you've got the everyday just mm. of running a business. But um, very often we don't, we don't really talk about that stuff. We're not honest enough. And whereas I'm like, ah, I'll just be in my soul. I don't mind. Like, what's the worst, <laughs> what's the worst going to happen? Isn't it? I don't it's know. Like, Nothing happens. You know? Like, we're just, exactly. I don't know. This respect for more acts. It is funny how, like, at, Printware, everyone was taking pictures of 
even at Pizza Express or even at the pizza place, you've got your laptop out giving people a tutorial. Oh but, yeah, doing the steps. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I just I just feel like there's three parts of the industry that we don't need anymore, which is trade shows, uh, trade magazines, and um, resellers of equipment who have no like these kind of like weird little rogue ones who aren't associated with any big company and aren't like importing them, maintaining the machines. They're like these reseller people, mm-hmm. reseller vultures. We need to get rid of all of them. <laughs> yeah. Reseller vultures. And I know one in particular I hate and he hates me back. So whatever. Um, so yeah, but I think we can get rid of them through more interaction together and just cutting out the middleman. Cause then what have they got? They just, yeah. yeah, I feel like we can make our own information magazine and it doesn't have to be in like, <laughs> do you know, we've got our own, we've got our own things. Because imagine if we had like a hundred words from you about, you know, the the automation of, or like using the spider mm-hmm. and then like a little bit from me about, I don't know, some fucking I don't know, ultra colors or something or something that I'm interested in, maybe like promotion and then we've got like from old Elton's about doing into retail, like little bits from each other. We could make our own little zine and mm-hmm. it wouldn't, we could just cut them out. It's, <laughs> they're, all just, it, they're all just slathered in gilded and adverts anyway. Sorry, go on. <laughs> it, is, it is really interesting. I think, yeah, I think the word of a printer or the word of a good printer, it definitely speaks volumes compared to, because we've, we've had a couple of sales guys in here recently, you know, and they just, they're, they're all saying the same stuff, you know, and I just say to them, look, you know, you guys all come in here and all say the same stuff. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm going to listen to a printer before I listen to you, you know, mm. like there's some stuff, some things that I've gone through in, in, you know, and I've spent so much money on, you know, money that I could have earned for myself. I've spent it on trying to progress, you know, with, with equipment and stuff. And, you know, there are things that I would have done differently if I, if I'd known, but mm. you know, salesmen don't tell you the truth. They just, they, they, they tell you this out and the other. And and often it's really hard, especially buying equipment like this. It's like, there's not many printers out here who have all of it. I mean, yeah, it's, it, it's becoming more and more popular now because people are realizing the benefits of making those investments. But, um, you know, like if, you know, to be able to go to another printer and say, Oh, you've got this, um, what's, what's the truth, you know? Mm, um, mm. cause I'll, I'll always tell the truth. If somebody asks me about any bits of my gear, I'll tell them the good stuff. I'll tell them the bad stuff and you know, I'll tell them where I wouldn't buy again or, you know, or what I would do differently or whatever, because ultimately it stops somebody else making a tens of thousands of pounds mistake. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Um, and I think, um, oh, Siri is just talking to me. Here. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's it. Really. Exactly. Yeah. Just take it from each other. So like who are like some top printers that other people should at least follow if they're not honored enough to like have conversations with that you like really respect? Um, like uh, who, who are the boys that you just said? And also you should put some, I know you're talking about girls as well, because I know uh, some other people you talk to, but we don't mind being um, called so boys print, and girls. Printers that I chat with often. Um, so, uh, Lancaster Print House, do you know them? Yeah, yeah. Um, you got another printer, Brandon Laytru, I think is how you say his last name. He recently went out on his on his own and started his own shop. He used to work for a big printer over in the States. Um, how do you say his name? Uh, I think it's Laytru, L E I T R U, maybe. Uh, let's have a look. But he does some really cool stuff. Mm. Um, again, water based. Um, so most of the guys I chat to is are water based guys, um, just because there's not there's not tons of people out there doing it. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Or trying to trying to push the trying to push the boundaries, if you know what I mean. Um, mm. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Leitru, L E I T R U. Um, chat with Sarah from Heck Press quite a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. In fact, she just bought our press, so she's going to be uh, rocking it very soon. Um, yeah, she's so excited about with, that. It's brilliant. Uh, Monster Press Boys, chat with them yeah. guys a lot. Um, obviously, Tony Palmer as well, chat with those a lot. With those, with him rather. Um, he's cool. He's good. Uh, he's good fun. Uh, and then you've got Danny from Flipping Sweet. Yeah. 
catch up with him quite often. Um, who else? I'm gonna feel really bad now if I leave people out and I uh, try to go try to go through my uh, through my conversations here. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's enough. That's enough people. Yeah, 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 out. yeah. And and all the rest of you, don't 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 be horrible yeah, to Alex if I missed you out. <laughs> yeah, if I missed you out, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, but um, but there's yeah, there's, there's quite a few that I chat to. You, so yeah, hit me up on Instagram, and I'll, I'll happily recommend who to who to chase and follow. And um, if, funny enough, actually, I was asking Tony Palmer the other day. I said uh, I sent him a message saying, who you know, who do you know are amongst the the best printers you know here in the UK. Because uh, I just wanted to find some more guys to to follow, you know, mm. and because um, it's 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 great when you see people just working really hard on their craft, you know, and um, but producing stuff that's really good. Because mm. um, it, it is inspiring. It's I love it. I love just scrolling through my feed and seeing sick prints. You know, like ah, oh, mm. yeah, this is cool. You know, and um, um, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of there's a lot of guys in the industry who are just you know quite up themselves and um, think that they are. God's gift to the industry. Surely this but is this is your unpopular opinion. There are there are yeah, guys who are who are God's go, gift and literally putting like <laughs> the crown on their own heads. But that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. <clears throat> so um but no the the guys I generally catch up with are really lovely, humble guys and we're we're always learning from each other, you know, uh, and none of us are afraid to to ask questions. Like I'm not afraid to go, oh boys, I'm I'm stuck with this. Any any thoughts or you know, and as I say, it's it's really, you know, listen to guys' opinions that you respect. You know, you're going to listen to that over any salesman or any mm. any anything really. So, but yeah, um, but uh, that's I would say that's one of my favorite parts of the industry now is 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 how open it's becoming. Because um, yeah. I've always been up for sharing anything mm. that I've learned. You know, for for as long as I've been doing it. But um, so it's really nice to see. You know, uh, especially with more of these kind of podcasts and stuff, and mm. it's great. It's great just yeah, seeing people chat about about the craft and just listen to people moaning about a day that you know you had last week, you know. It's yeah. like great. shit goes south really quick, like out of nowhere. Um yeah, yeah just in life, but then in in screen print, especially, especially as a craft. Especially in the print shop. Oh, oh my like God. and and it's 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 madness. Like we can we can have the most ridiculous day, right? That is like you know, I think, I think it was week before last. We had four or five rush orders come in on for the for the same day, on top of <laughs> orders that that were due to go out that day as well. And so we came in; it was mental. But you know, we did everything. Bang! Everything ran flawlessly. You know, everything went out the door. And then this week we had like the simplest, like two colored job, and it took us an entire day. It was only like a hundred and something pieces front and back, but yeah. just for various reasons, like because the type of blank, we had to change the kind of type of ink and then that caused issues. And there was sticking and there was and honestly, it's like I got to <laughs> the end of the day and I was wrecked. I was like, we've made no money today. Yeah. You know, we've, we've just lost, lost, you know? And, um, but you know, it's just, it is what it is. And we don't get those, those days, much these days you know it's like because i think the longer you've been doing it the more problems you've had to solve and you can start to plan ahead mm. and see things but now and again just something comes bang and yeah, just yeah. from nowhere and you're like what the heck this yeah. is the easiest thing in the world what happened you know yeah but but well, soon you'll be able to like put your feet up in your pizza restaurant with a beer and oh, you mm-hmm. probably don't drink, but like, I, I don't drink. Yeah, I know you don't drink. But um, yeah, well, you can, with an alcohol free beer. Uh, I will sit there and I will enjoy pizza after pizza. That's what I'll do. Yeah. Wood yeah. fired pizza, proper pizza, man. Are you uh, curl your pizza slice into a into like a roll? Or are you a. No, I'm a. I'm a actually, I, I, I will grab the slice, I will sort of fold it in half. But I'm also a knife and fork pizza eater as well. What a knife and yeah. fork? Yeah, yeah. So it depends on depends <laughs> where you are. Depends yeah. on depends on the vibe. So uh, sometimes I do enjoy eating a pizza with a knife and fork. But um, you got to do that in front yeah. of the kids, I suppose. Um, yeah. Kids, oh no, they 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 be they be stuffing the thing. They love the pizza, man. They absolutely <laughs> love it. They just yeah. Eat me out of house and home, man. I know. Milk and you, oh, just, we used to get through so much because I was one of seven. My mum was always just putting these massive seven, no, six pinters in. 
Right. No, they, they, they actually flexed the door <laughs> of the fridge because they were so yeah, heavy. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like bulging yeah. out, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And then my brothers would just be at the fridge just gulping it down. It's disgusting. But, yeah, that's milk. I'm sure it's just been, should have got a cow. Anyway. Yes, um, that would have been a better investment, sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Really, really no appreciate worries. it. God, I don't know what you're going to do in a few years. Hopefully not. You just, like, stop spending. Should we all just message you and say you don't need anything? You've got the perfect setup. Really. I know, I know, I know. I do, I do need to just stop. Although saying that, I did buy, um, <laughs> buy. A, I bought a coffee machine a couple of weeks ago. Oh my god! And, um, in fact, I bought two because <laughs> um, <laughs> I was looking. I was, there's this specific coffee machine I wanted, right? And like they're really expensive to buy brand yeah. new. So normally you lease them, and we had a company come out and bring one out because uh, my brother-in-law really likes his coffee. I like my coffee and. Um, you know, these machines do hot chocolate and stuff. My kids love hot chocolate. And so anyway, long story short, I've been looking for ages for this used used machine. Uh, anyway, one day I'm on eBay and this guy is selling two of them. <laughs> two of them. So I was like, oh man, I'll buy the two on the business and I'll just put one at home, you know, because why yeah. not? Like, you know? Yeah. So anyway, long story short, I did it. I went for it. I was like, I never treat myself. I always buy gear. And so I was like, stuff it, I'm treating myself. So now I've got this exact same machine at home and in work and my kids love it. Like they come home every day, they put the cup in, they press a button, instant hot chocolate. They love it. Yeah, <laughs> that's brilliant. Yeah. So there you go. It's like a self-looking after kids. I was, I was trying to explain this theory to uh, my manager, Jim, about like they're having, you have a certain amount of kids and then they look after each other, but I don't think you can mm-hmm. them, But you hear it oh, again yeah. now. It's yeah. great. It's, 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 yeah. We're like, we, we don't, we have to, hardly have to do anything for them. It's brilliant. So, yeah. you know, it's like yeah, sort of, cleaning the oven. Sort them out when they're young, when they're like two, three, get them, get them on the right path and then happy days. Yeah. I say that the, 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 the two oldest ones are teenagers, but the, um, the others are not yet. So I might be speaking too early. It might be getting ahead of myself. It might go all wrong. Everybody keeps telling me when they, well, when they're teenagers, woo. but so far, this is this is the time to put them in boarding Fantastic. school, and then they just get, get it, they get everything <laughs> bullied out of them. No, 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 you put them in like put them in Christ Hospital. That's where I went. They there's some rich person pays for you. You go on yeah. like a scholarship, and if it yeah, it will get bullied out of them if if it if there's anything in them to to do. Not that I got bullied, uh, but <clears throat> no, nah, I, I I think I'd uh, I'd miss them too much, <laughs> especially the boys. I've, I've got my two oldest boys on payroll now. Oh, cool. So um, yeah, they, they they're, they're actually officially on payroll. They get pay slip every month, so they come in and they clean all my screens once a week. Nice. And um, so they go through like I don't know whatever sixty or seventy screens or whatever. And uh, so it's great. Monday morning we come in, they're ready to coat. Happy days. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's the dream. Well, that's, it's tax efficient as well. So yeah, it is. Yeah, man. Happy days. Awesome. So there you Thanks. go. If you, Thanks, if you come to 12 or older, if you're 12 or older, they can go on payroll. They have their own national insurance category. So they don't Building pay have a credit score, hopefully. Like with, <laughs> yeah, there you, you know, go. Getting their own little credit cards and stuff. Brilliant. That's it. If, yeah. There you go. Job done. So yeah, <laughs> there we go. A few more years. I can have more in here and then maybe, maybe I can quit then. Yeah. I'll just just feign an injury. Start, just say you got a bad back. Yes, I do have no bad luck. Pre- yeah, but just, you know, <laughs> push on that and then drift off into the pizza place. And then yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's the plan. Yeah. Hopefully they don't watch this and know your plan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> Cheers. All See right, you in a bit. Bye. Bye.